Headline Show Podcast number 24. We have a great show coming up for you guys today. We have the Nexus 7 II coming, the HTC Killing ROMs, M7, NVIDIA smartphones unlocking your phone, some news about the Galaxy Note 8.0, and possibly a special uh, in-depth look at the rise and the fall of Samsung. So uh, we have an action-packed show for you. It's time to get your droid on. And uh, let me introduce my co-hosts here today. My co-host, first coming to us from uh, Detroit, is Alex. How you doing, Alex? Pretty good. How about you? Doing good. Thank you. Alex is our associate editor and uh, fixture weekly here on our show. And uh, moving uh, two more to my right is Doug Scudder coming to us from the Windy City of Chicago. How you doing, Doug? I'm doing good. I'm living life. Great, buddy. Glad to see you're living life. And uh, sitting right next to him is our senior editor, or no, sorry, senior writer, Randy Orwood from the Kentucky State Bourbon uh, Capital of the World. How you doing, Randy? Well, I'm no longer freezing. How's that? Well, that's a, that, that, that's a great sign. It's, it warmed up, I take it, out in uh, Kentucky, did it? 65. Almost went fishing. Awesome, buddy. Time to get a suntan. And uh, last but not least, our uh, assistant editor, Tom, the Duke Dawson, coming to you from uh, the UK near Buckingham Palace. Yep. How's it going, Tommy? Not bad, not bad. How's, uh, how's the weather? Ra rainy or cloudy? Yeah, yeah, it's a um, bit of better, bit, quite windy, a bit blustery, a bit of rain, but uh, no snow, no Arctic blast. It's all good, it's all good. For all, for all of you at home, we always ask what the weather's like in the UK from uh, Tom. Because it's, it's always rainy. Rainy, cold. It's a regular feature. Something like that. <laughs> I don't even know why we ask. We know what it's going to be like. How's it going, Tom? It's rainy and cloudy in the UK, isn't it? Right? The day, you know, we, what we need to hear is the day when it is sunny. That'll be a little more surprising. Yeah, what do you want to do? You want to ring me up? Uh, you just want to do a podcast in September. And uh, and then next week it'll be raining again. Oh, perfect, perfect. We have a lot of news to get to this week. Lots of stuff has broken over the past week. Mobile World Conference is coming up in uh, end of February, and stuff is starting to break uh, as it is. We're starting to see a lot of leaks. A lot of uh, news is starting to hit the airways. We're going to go right over to our uh, assistant editor, Tom, and he has some uh, news, uh, probably the biggest news of the week. Uh, about Google and uh, a Nexus 7. What's what's the deal, Tom? What's going on? Well, uh, basically, DigiTimes um, ran a report, and then we, you know, we picked up on it as well. I think uh, who was it that did it? DigiTimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DigiTimes uh, saw it, and then Alex uh, Alex ran a post ran a post about it, and um, basically, uh, it's you know rumors that um, Google and um, Asus are working on a second generation um, Nexus 7 uh, that we could uh, see at the same kind of time we saw last year's Nexus 7 um, in May, sort of Google I.O. time. What kind of specs? Has there been any rumored specs coming out of this, to, out of this yet, Tom? Uh, no, no, nothing, uh, nothing concrete, but um, it, uh, there's rumors that like it you know, sort of come with uh, um, Another, you know, another version of Jelly Bean sort of thing, and um, a full HD, that, HD display as well, too, possibly is is from what I've been hearing. Um, I I don't know about that Jelly Bean rumor. I hope it's not a. I hope we're going to see a new operating system at Google I/O. Key Lime Pie has been rumored around for a while. Hopefully, that's what is, will come with this device. Uh, yeah, but I mean, um, basically, it's just sort of like um, a hardware refresh, and they're just going to sort of double up, double up the specs. I think, uh, I think a lot of it is probably going to be sort of going toe to toe with uh, Amazon because everyone knows that Amazon are going to do this every year now. So well, there's al also rumors that it could have a thinner bezel as well, too, thinner display border around it. So that would so it could change up a little bit on on in terms of the design wise. And I know Tom just finally got his Nexus 7. He finally uh, gave up his uh, 
touchpad as being an Android device and decided to be welcome to the true Android stock world. Who, who uh, says I've given up on it? I'm just gonna I'm gonna run them both. Who says he's stuck? <laughs> We, we're going to have a burial of it, a burning of it, a killing of it. That'll be next week on here where we uh, find a hundred ways to kill a touchpad. You can uh, laugh, but that thing ran Ubuntu. It ran, you know, it's got Jelly Bean. It's got 4.1.2 on it. Nexus you know, runs Ubuntu, too. Yeah, that's amazing true. What, amazing what you can do when you don't have money to buy a new Nexus 7. Well, it was, it was, it was, it was more to do with the fact that I didn't, I didn't want a Nexus 7. He was waiting on the dock. <laughs> yeah, I actually know the dock that finally got released. Welcome That's to the seven party, Tom. Look, right. I need a dock in my life. Exactly. All right, just moving right along here. Um, Alex has some news about uh, HTC. Where they caused a little bit of a kerfuffle last week. And uh, what is it, Alex? What, what did HTC do to piss off uh, the dev community? Well, HTC pretty much shut down the htcruu.com website, which has a bunch of uh, RUUs, which are ROM update utilities, so you can go back to stock on your device or update to the next version before your carrier sends you your update. They also have some custom ROMs that you can download from that site. HTC pretty much shut them down for putting out uh, trademark and copyrighted stuff. So they basically suck the, the, the they sick their uh, lawyers on them to have them shut down, remove all the ROMs, um, claiming that there was infringement on their trademark and copyrights. And uh, you know this is kind of a petty thing to kind of do in my eyes, uh, unless you know they were leaking something super special, you know that hadn't been released to the market. Android is, you know, obviously, you know, about rooting and, and ROMs and everything like that. And when you have, you know, an OEM like HTC going out there and kind of playing a heavy hand, you know, on a site, you know, that, you know, to phone owners, to supporters of HTC, basically, that use these and go out there and say, no, sorry, you can't, you know, the site can't use it anymore. Um, it's kind of a, you know, kind of underhanded thing to do considering that's what Android is all about. Um, what are your guys' opinion on this? It was a dick move. It was a dick move. <laughs> and you don't expect less than a dick move from a dick company. So, so how, do you re- how do you really feel about that, though, Randy? Well, I mean, if you're still trying to figure that out, get in out of the sun. I, you know, I, I'm not, I, I'm not surprised that HTC of all uh, of all the Android OEMs decided to go after a uh, yeah, you know, I, I I'm I'd never heard of this. What was it? R U U H T C dot com. H T whatever. Yeah, I, I'd never heard of them, but I'm assuming you know, just like all the others, just a community site. Uh, and uh, and H T C goes after them. It's a dick move. Congratulations, H T C. You're dead. What did they have great. to gain? Yeah. Well, what what was HTC going to ha- possibly have happened that would be good that would make them more profitable from shutting these guys down? If there's somebody that was selling your proprietary software, yeah, shut them down. That's illegal. But they're giving it away. What's wrong with you? And obviously this stuff is readily available in many other places as well. They didn't go and obviously. shut down any other sites. Um, like you know, XD or Rushriki. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's tons of places that they could go out there. So either these guys have pissed them off or they decided that, you know, they were fucking bored and they wanted to piss off some Android phones and wanted to, you know, not sell some devices in the future and, you know, convert some people over to Samsung or LG. I think that that must have been, the you know, their overall idea behind it because they can't see anything else that was rational or logical about it overall. Dick move. It's nonsense. So, uh, big thumbs down to HTC for this move. Hopefully, we'll see something um, come, you know, a little bit of uh, community support come out of this, a little bit of pressure. I think those guys should be reinstated, you know, let them put their stuff up. We're talking about old phones here. We're not talking about, you know, they just released, you know, some oh, hidden on. brand new version of fucking Sense. Or you know something something proprietary. It's coming out in a new phone or something. 
Mm-hmm. Old phones, old phones still mean something to to HTC. Have you heard after after dragging uh, Thunderbolt owners around by the joint for two years, they're finally <laughs> going to release the Thunderbolt yes. They're they're hey, they're dicks. I mean, that's just all there is to it. Um, but who would want to infringe on sense? Most yeah. don't even want it. Didn't, it didn't make sense. There's, if you know, the problem is, is if they didn't put the bloatware and sense on there to be, fucking begin with, people wouldn't have to probably root or rom their 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 crap crap any phones anyways. And they would get updates out a lot faster. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you say I that. don't know. I don't know if I should blame Verizon or HTC for all the shitware that came in pre pre installed crapware on my on my Thunderbolt. Verizon. But, uh, it's both. Verizon. Nothing, it's, it's, nothing it's improved the Because the Droid DNA yeah, has I don't know, but nothing too improved many the way that phone ran. Yeah, and I mean, like, even Alex, we've had the Droid DNA, and it's loaded up with crapware as well, too. And, you know, There's, and, like, three pages of apps when you first boot it up. And, it, and it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it? It's ridiculous. Um, like, hi, you you don't need to install any apps. We're gonna do it for you. Yeah, you. We got know everything. what you like. We know what you want. And if yeah. you do, if you don't like or or you don't don't want any of this shit on your phone, it's fucking bad anyways. <laughs> you know, you can go to this website. And it's um, all great shit. You new, can't get rid of it. Go get a new ROM. <laughs> oh no, forget about going getting that ROM. We just took that website down. Um, yeah, so <laughs> oh, good job, HTC. I'm sure that that. You know that definitely uh, impressed a lot of Android users, especially the dev community. Um, so we won't, you know, we could bitch on HTC for that move all day long and have a whole show on it. Let's move on to our next topic. We're going to move over to Doug. Doug has some exciting news that just came out today from uh, who would it be? HTC. What a coincidence! Indeed, um, it looks like uh, we might end up with um, uh, having the M7. HTC's next supposedly flagship flagship device being announced twice. Um, apparently, HTC is having uh, let's see, February nineteenth. They're having a event about you know that's just their event in London, very similar to what Samsung has done. Um, and then obviously we're expecting something from them at the Mobile World Congress as well. Obviously, we don't know what's going to be announced when. Uh, presumably, the device like the M7 would be would be displayed both places. Um, the specs that are rumored so far for the M7, um, I actually don't have those in front of me. I don't know if any of you guys know them off the top of your head. We've yes. actually we've we've pretty well killed the specs on the M7. Everyone. Pretty it's well the the Droid phone. DNA with the 4.7 inch screen. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's, it's a Droid DNA clone. Yes, yeah, it, exactly. It looks the same, feels the same. Little minor adjustments. Hello, 2011 HTC. But uh, the only thing we're really <laughs> missing here is the official press shots that we'll be waiting to come out on uh, on the 19th. It is, and yeah. we'll be having an event in London and New York simultaneously. Um, yeah, that's great for like. You know, I I don't think it's a bad idea from a marketing perspective to do your own event. It has worked really well for Samsung. And obviously, if it's done well and if it looks really good, yes, it can help. And HTC, they have to even if they can't make devices that are as good as what Samsung is turning out, and maybe hopefully as good as what Motorola will be turning out in a year or so. But if they want to play with the big boys, they do kind of have to act like they're a part of that. You know, they're they're an elite manufacturer that holds exactly. their own events, and right. you know they launch things to big fanfare. And I think that makes sense. But at the same time, you know, they've got to figure out a way to reach out to the Android community and and get us back on board. I used to love HTC, and now they're pulling crap like all the stuff we just talked about. And, you know, why would I go get an M7 when I've got, you know, I could still go get a Nexus 4. Exactly. You know, and you, you hit on a lot of thing that we've, we've really, you know, uh, hammered is that HTC needs to market better. You know, and, and hopefully with these events we'll see some better marketing. Hopefully as well these devices will come out on all four carriers, although right now it's looking like it's going to be three carriers minus T-Mobile for this device. 
So hopefully, you know, there'll be some good marketing behind it, regardless of what we think or, you know, the little slack that we've given HTC with their uh, ROM uh, situation. There are HTC lovers out there, and you know what? They're a big part of Android. So hopefully, you know, um, some of these leaks, maybe we didn't get all the information. We can hope for the best, and then hopefully they'll have some surprises for us when they launch these devices. Because um, the one thing that they haven't really done is gone out and surprised the Android community pretty well. Um, last year, you know, their One X series was a decent series. Um, it became outdated, you know, by halfway through the year, and they didn't really respond too well after that. Hopefully, we can, you know, see some different looks, you know, a little, uh, you know, boost in some specs as well too. Maybe there's an M7 Plus or something like that's going to come out. <laughs> it's going to blow us away in terms of, you know, Christmas 2013. <laughs> but uh, right now, they're not looking like, you know, if they're going to be re-releasing a Droid DNA basically internationally, they're not going to have, you know, it's a great idea. What are you talking about? Banner year that they're looking for. No. So, it's the sensation all back. over again. Yeah, Let's, it is. It is, and they need a comeback, and you're not going to get a comeback. Like you said, Chris, they need to do something that's that's exceptional. They've got to set themselves apart. You know, Samsung has had such high-quality hardware for such a long time that that's kind of their thing. Like, if you want good hardware, go to Samsung. You know it, it's going to be reliable. But it's also, like you have said, too, it's just not the, the hardware itself as well. It's also right. staying in touch with the communities, with the Absolutely. ROMs, you know, ma making them, you know, available quickly as well. Also, <laughs> listening to the customers. I remember yes. Randy last year, we ran a story about how HTC talked to their consumers and the consumers, well, what, it was, what was it, Randy, you, you remember yeah. this? They wanted uh, they wanted thinner phones and less battery life. Uh, yeah, and, and, a, oh, and, a, yeah. And, a, and a piece Tell of shit that, that wasn't was going to get updated. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. I don't know, I don't know who the fuck their focus group was, but I hope yeah. they were running that. Totally People with power banks. <laughs> The, uh, the, the focus group for that was just a bunch of people with like batteries strapped to the backs. Do you, do you want thinner phones or more batteries? Well, we've got batteries all over our back, so yeah, no. they had they had those those knapsack battery power. Yeah. Packs with them. they didn't really fucking care. They were already plugged in at wherever they were, you know, doing the survey. It was just HTC from. employees. So, that's all it was. You know, <laughs> HTC needs to get a little more in touch with the community. You know, and hopefully they they can turn things around. We'll see. We'll see. You know, we slagged on. We're slagging on them pretty hard there. So you know, hopefully uh, our our readers and followers as well won't you know let a, a droid DNA uh, reproduction you know be the most amazing thing because that's the one way that we can send a clear message to HTC that they're not putting out you know what we want and that's with our pocketbooks. And it's obvious in the past year how their financial reports are and how well other devices are selling that HTC, you know, has gotten that message. Maybe they're not listening. Maybe they got HTC Sense 5.0 in their fucking ears plugging it up. But whatever it is, if they don't come out with a great product this year, they're really going to get the message hardcore, and that's going to be in stock prices. So uh, let's move on, guys, to our uh, next story. And I'm going to throw this over to Randy. Randy didn't actually cover this story, but I figured, you know what? He's on here. He likes, he likes to talk. Let's throw him a story. Randy, why don't you hit up this latest piece of news here that we sent up to you that broke over the weekend? Yeah, uh, reading a source article for this, uh, for this story that Tom did, that reminds me how shitty machine translation can actually be. But uh, uh, was it... What, Tom, was it Digit Times Russia that uh, they Mo broke Mobile this? Review, Adam. Oh yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Uh, MobileReview.com uh, has this uh, totally unsubstantiated rumor that Nvidia is going to enter the, uh, the the tablet and phone game uh, to uh, to further extend their Tegra processor reach, uh, and uh, the, the this. Of course, being hot on the heels of their project, oh shit! How much is this thing going to cost? A uh, little handheld gaming console. Thing. <laughs> what was that called? Uh, the shield. Shield. Shield me shit. from the price shield. tag. Yeah. Shield. Shield me shit. from the price tag. Shield you me know. from that tag. Uh, our friends at uh, at Digitime Russia say that they're not going to directly manufacture their own uh, 
their own devices, but they're going to enter the game as an OEM, which you know, it, it, if they're going to do it, that's fine. I mean, that's worked out pretty well for Apple in the computer space and uh, Vizio in the TV space. OEM, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense from that perspective of, you know, not having to dirty your hands uh, and deal directly with the likes of Foxconn. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, I don't know. It, it, it makes sense on one hand, but then on the other hand, it's, uh, you know, why the hell would you wade out into such uh, such shallow waters with, you know, so many fish swimming around in your feet? I just... Yeah, and I mean, they, the, the, there's a few problems kind of with this rumor, you know, that I'll throw throw some salt on it, as we say with all of our rumors, always take them with a grain of salt. Mm, um, salt. But they have, it, they have a chance of alienating a lot of, you know, the people who buy their chips, first of all, that's one of the problems. But maybe not so much as a problem uh, coming up because, you know, while they might not be, you know, selling as many chips to other companies if they're in that same space competing, you know, for uh, smartphone dollars, one of the problems that NVIDIA has kind of come up with, and I, I can't substantiate it yet because I haven't, you know, tested out the new uh, NVIDIA latest uh, CPU here, their Tegra 4, but early indications from what I'm hearing is that Qualcomm and the Sam and the new Samsung chips could blow it out of the water, and maybe that's the reason why they've decided to come up with their own uh, smartphones and tablets is because they're not, they got to put these chips somewhere if people aren't buy you know if these OEMs are not going to be buying their chips they somehow got to get them out to market and maybe it makes sense to uh, you know put out their own devices because as we seen last year Qualcomm and well obviously Samsung doing their own their own devices but Qualcomm pretty well owned the uh, chip market last year and uh, pretty well you know every major phone that came out did not have a Tegra 4 chip in it except for HTC. Um, you know, that's another, you know, we already went down that road before. So they were kind of behind the game last year. So if they really want to get out into the mobile space, you know, in, in, into phones, maybe they're going to have to create, maybe they decided they're going to create their own space and their own phones to put these processors out. Um, we'll see. This rumor, you know, Kind of iffy, a little sketchy, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Tom, you wanted to say something? Um, I, I think um, the bigger thing behind this is that we all know that, like, um, from a smartphone perspective, uh, getting a phone with a quad, with a with a Snapdragon S4 in it is going to give you more of a smartphone experience. It's like Tegra don't haven't done this before, whereas Qualcomm have been doing it for years. So, mm -hmm. um, which is why the S4 dual core uh, last year sort of blew everything else because it was the only one that supported LTE and gave a decent speed as well until Samsung sorted out the 4412. But um, we all know that Tegra is just a media consumption thing. It's like that's why it's in the Nexus 7. Uh, it's why HTC foolishly put it in the One X here and then the One X Plus on 18T because it's about media. It's about um, content and gaming and draining your battery. Yeah, yes. exactly. But I mean, <laughs> the thing is, is it's all about media consumption. So if you get in at like ground level and you and you 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 lay out like a platform of media consumption, and then you push the Tegra zone and games harder than anything, and then I think this might be um, the start of uh, it. Could I don't know. You know, I, I think there might be some truth in it, but probably not. Um, but you know, they could do like you know Intel, like. You, Anything with Intel is always advertised as Intel. You never ever escape the fact that a laptop or something has Intel in it. And I think I mean, Nvidia probably. Wouldn't sort of, it be smarter that they maybe partner up with, say, an LG or a, you know, HTC or something to really push this more than than going out there and bringing out their own devices? Yeah, they already partnered with uh, Asus. They, they, yeah, they def definitely are, but Asus is not really so much in the phone market mm. as much as they'd like to be. Yeah. And, then, and getting the Tegra 4 phone. Not in the U.S. No, yeah, and I mean the, the pad phone, you know, it's, you know. Uh, the pad phone. So that's a whole different fucking another conversation for another day. Oh, really yeah. getting into the phone market more, you know, and maybe, you know, having a major, you know, supplier throwing their stuff out because HTC also, you know, they, they kind of, you know, they, I, I think they kind of go with who's hot or who's got the best deal on chips. You know, sometimes it's a Qualcomm, sometimes it's a Tegra 4, so they're kind of back and forth, and maybe this is a, you know, their way of trying to get into the smartphones more, more mainstream. So it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. 
uh, let's move on to our next topic. And our next topic was actually a really hot topic on social media last week. It was burning up the airwaves. And Alex was heading up this story and uh, answering lots of questions as people were wanting to know the straight goods on this. So, Alex, why don't you tell us a little bit about the story and what got everyone's ruffles, uh, feathers ruffled, and uh, what was it all about? Well, starting Saturday the 26th, it's now illegal to sim unlock your phone. That has nothing to do with unlocking your bootloader or rooting it, which is what a lot of people were thinking. But if you bought your phone before then, you're grandfathered in so you can sim unlock it legally. But it's still best just to call your carrier. They'll usually let you unlock it before your contract's up as long as you don't owe them money. So how did this law come into effect? What what did, what happened here? Was li the Library of Congress... Because they might mess something up in 20 years. You yep. never know. It's a mess. Sorry, guys. I had a little technical difficulty. First time I ever got cut off from my own fucking hangout. <laughs> <laughs> no, normally it's me. So yeah, we back. Need to blame it on Tom. So this is, you know, where where did this take place? Obviously, probably the the, the carriers were. Uh, the ones it's that probably AT and T and T Mobile because Sprint and Verizon it's hard to flash. You can't really flash that phone onto a different carrier. Except well, you can't. You can't. You can't. Ro I mean, I, I didn't realize that Sprint and Verizon's network were interoperable anyway. For right. Sprint, you can put it onto a booster version mobile because they're NVNOs. Yeah, well, that's NVNOs. Sprint, but I don't see Sprint's gonna have a big deal with that because they're well, kind of still getting the money. So now for our people at home that, you know, this kind of pisses them off, there is a petition going around. And if you go to our site, um, you you can sign the petition so we can lobby, lobby uh, you know, and have no, nothing done because obviously politicians get paid, you know, from corporations to take big money from lobbyists that support their campaigns <laughs> and the whole judicial system. And no, oh, YouTube is going to The that's, system. That's a story for another day. But you can go out there and sign this petition and, you know, waste your fucking time hoping that something will be done about it. But hopefully, you know, maybe, maybe just somehow we can get enough attention to it because I don't really think it's right. Alex, why don't you give us a bit of the details on, on um, what people need to know about their phone, what, what they can do, what they can't do with, with their, with their uh, phones. Well, if you want it unlocked, like if you're going out of the country and you want to use a, a SIM from another carrier, say in Canada or in Europe, you can call up your probably either AT&T or T-Mobile and if it's a reasonable request, they'll unlock it for you or send you the unlock code within a couple hours. Uh, you just have to have your bill paid up to date, so you can't be behind on that because then they won't let you unlock it. But what the uh, like the companies that are unlocking them, they could um, they, their punishment is like up to half a million in fines or oh, jail back. time. I imagine that a lot of these companies are moving to uh, Bongo or some third world nation to host their servers and become registered <laughs> businesses there now so they can, uh, you know, 
Offshore the avoid law. The strong, uh, <laughs> avoid the law. The long arm of the law. And I want to know, you know, how the hell are they going to know that I have my, I've unlocked my phone? Unless there's some, yeah. you know, carrier data out there that they're getting back. You know, and what the fuck are they going to Carrier IQ. Yes. Just flash a ROM and it's gone. Yeah. Exactly. The ROM I have doesn't have carrier IQ. Oh, no, no. I didn't tell you that, you know, if I unlock my phone and I get a phone call from my carrier telling me that, you know, you've unlocked your phone, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to tell them, fuck you, I'm switching carriers. You know what? I don't want to deal with a heavy handed fucking, you know, communist controlling type of company <laughs> like you, anyways. Because this is utter fucking bullshit. I'll buy my device from Europe, you're no longer going to get my fucking money, and I'll go with a, another carrier instead. You know, so I, you know what? I dare you to call me. Go ahead, call me for my unlocked phone. I got some fucking words for you. Don't the, worry uh, about un don't worry about unlocking your phone. Just buy unlock to begin with. A legally yes. unlocked phone. Yep. Get a prepaid SIM. Save a few bucks and and tell the library and the Congress uh, to, to 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 forget about it. Yeah. And you know what? And I think that's the best way. <laughs> I love you went with forget about it. I really do think that's, that's the best way. That's not what I was going to say. <laughs> you going to say fuck you. I was going to say anyway. tell the library to fuck off, but I chose not to do that. Okay, okay. Well, he's nice of you. <laughs> Very nice of you. The White House uh, petition is at 38,184. So you can see it's <laughs> really heard. gaining steam. Oh, that's um, something. People believe that, a lot in the in the process of Congress. That's probably every T-Mobile customer <laughs> <laughs> has signed that petition. <laughs> Although that's not nearly as many as the Death Star. Proper coverage. <laughs> the the petition to uh, create a Death Star got way more than that. That was like a hundred and something thousand. I signed that one. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. I love that. We didn't we didn't sign the unlocking one, but uh, the one about I the... signed both. I signed both. <laughs> I, I this unlock. Yeah, the hell with it. If, what are they going to do? It's not aimed at. It's not aimed at the individual. It's aimed at the companies that are profiting off of unlocking uh, phones that are contractually right. bound to a carrier. It's right. not about the individual at all. It, it never was, and it never will be. But I mean, AT&T uh, I mean, AT really, is not going to come after you for unlocking your phone. They, oh they wanna, yeah, they came after some little website guy for hosting ROMs. Better that was HTC. HTC needs to improve their bottom that line. Was they might be coming after us. That that was HTC, and, and HTC could learn a thing or two about being dicks from AT and T, and from Verizon, and from Sprint, and from T Mobile. But I mean, the fact of the matter is, that was HTC. <laughs> just, just buy an unlocked phone, buy a prepaid SIM, and you can change carriers month to month if you feel like it. I mean, it's. I, this is a non-issue for for an individual end user. If you own a business in the in your business every day is to unlock phones, you're fine. But well, if I you're an individual, you're you're fine. There, you know, that's the law. And and I agree with what you're saying 100%, Randy. But I think what is, some of the problem is is that you know we're you know the people that watch our show, the people that read our website are obviously very technically inclined, very smart individuals. But it's the average Joe at home that maybe doesn't follow up with technology that, you know, finds out, oh, it's Ill illegal to unlock my phone. Shit, I can't do that anymore. Oh, crap. Okay, I'll pay you money. I'll stay with you guys, whatever, and keep getting it up the fucking ass, you know, and you don't realize that they can go over and, you know, and they can buy unlocked phones or they can unlock it really. You know what? People at home, unlock your bloody phones. Do it in masses. Do it in quantity right, now it. just to piss them off. But I'm saying, you know, it's the average Joes at home that maybe get bullied, you know, by this new type of law, you know, that, you know, don't know any better. I've got a relative, and I'm not going to say what, what her relationship to me is. It's my fucking sister. She doesn't know her <laughs> smartphone from her laptop, but she knew to go to Amazon Wireless and buy an unlocked phone for, for her phone. And, and and I'm telling you, she doesn't. She most days I'm surprised that she's got the sense to put on pants before she leaves the house. But she went and bought an unlocked phone <laughs> from Amazon Wireless because she didn't want to be tied to, uh, you know, tied to uh, a contract. She went, she bought her own phone, unlocked, bought a prepaid SIM. Yeah, I'm shocked that she put this much thought into and made and made a sensical decision like that. So, yeah, don't don't count too many people too short on the issue because you know, my well, sister can figure it out. Anybody can. I agree, and I, I think it's important we get that message out there that you yeah you know that you should be buying your own phones instead of being locked down to one carrier and contract. Unfortunately, there's some people that can't 
dole out that cash, that live paycheck to paycheck, that still want that phone, and they get you know their balls in a nuts, you know nuts in, you know, in a hard place by having to you know sign these contracts. And you know you can get a prepaid, you can get a prepaid T-Mobile, Samsung, something or other stupid s this or that at Walmart for a hundred bucks and, and get service for thirty dollars a month. That phone can legally be unlocked. Uh, it's yours. It's not tied it. to a contract. I wouldn't recommend people buy it either. But if if you're living paycheck to paycheck, and, and you know if you're wondering, you know, at lunchtime where your dinner's going to come from, maybe you shouldn't be worried about a five hundred dollar cell phone. Go out, <laughs> buy what buy what you can afford. Take what that money will buy you, and shut up. You can unlock that prepaid phone. Uh, nobody, it's not tied to a contract, so therefore it's not covered by this uh, no longer existing exemption to the DMCA. Right and there, there's another problem. But, I mean, you know, okay, and you know what? Fair enough. Fair enough that we're giving them, you know, some options at home on what they can be doing. Go, you know. Yep. Don't don't sign the contract by yourself. You know, a phone. Don't let the man control you, right? Um, but at the end of the day, isn't this like about, you know, the carriers being heavy-handed, isn't it? You know, that that's that's where the problem really lies. The DMCA was never about cell phone carriers. It, it was, you know, that they had, had nothing to do with it. It was about movies and music and software pirating. The DMCA had nothing to do with carriers. Oh, yeah, which is totally broken. abused policy, by the way. Eh, I'll yeah. tell you, totally it's, abused policy. That's welcome, a bit of a different discussion. Welcome to the U.S. Uh, <laughs> any, it had nothing to do with the carriers, but you know, they they very smartly made it about them as well. Petition the Library of Congress, and and you know it's amazing. What we can see how well you, that's going right now. Thirty-eight thousand <laughs> signatures. So if you're a little bit pissed off at home, go sign the bloody thing. Stop being one of the people that bitch about it later on. Go and sign the thing. All right, guys. So let's move on over to Tom. And Tom, we got a, uh, some news about uh, the Samsung new product coming out. We heard a little bit of news earlier today too. Um, so why don't you head this up? Yeah, so um, this uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 8 that nobody knows anything about and nobody knows what it's going to come with and when it's coming. We had some apparently. rumored specs. We had some rumored specs. <laughs> but we don't know if it's a phone or a tablet. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, no one, we've never, no one's seen it or anything like that. It's, it's uh, a great secret kept by uh, Samsung that J.K. Shin, the head of Samsung Mobile, has um, released to a, a Korean publication, iNews24, and uh, he's basically hinted. He says, you know, that um, we're definitely going, you know, that um, we'll definitely see uh, another size variation of the Note line at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And uh, judging from those uh, strange um, pictures with a stylus, I think it might be an eight-inch tablet. I'm not sure because they've kept it under wraps really well. Well, and I think from also some of the stories that we heard out earlier today is that this could be launched in a kind of around mobile world conference timing, um, which is, you know, usually Samsung likes to do a whole big event and tell you how the product is going to change your world and how Apple sucks. But um, they're talking that they may actually, you know, try to get some buzz going at Mobile World Conference and possibly launch this device out at that time. Um, in, and we had heard some rumored specs, and this is kind of going to be like a, a I, I, at least I believe from the rumored specs and kind of the pricing that we're getting, is that this could be the iPad mini competitor, not mm. a high-end competitor, um, you know, as maybe the Tab 10.1 or a flagship, you know, Nex Nexus 10 device, but kind of something in that, that beats the iPad mini in price and spec-wise and is a little bit above what the Nexus 7 um, and comes with uh, S Pen for all of you S Pen lovers out there. Yeah, well, um, I mean, Samsung, are, Samsung are banking that um, uh, if they they're going to take like the quad core uh, Exynos that was in the Note two and put 1. it in there. One point six is what they're talking about putting in this thing, by the way. Yeah, um, but they're all they're, they're basically sort of banking that uh, with the Note, the S Pen, and a better screen resolution and you know added value against the Nexus Seven, they can sort of knock the iPad Mini out because Nexus Seven versus the iPad Mini is basically preference. Um, whereas, uh, you know, but it's got Samsung, an S Pen, so why wouldn't you buy it? 
basically this yeah, thing that's what they're, doing. They're, trying to, they're banking that their note variation is going to sway people over the next to 7 and the iPad Mini and yeah and basically Apple. this thing you know in terms of spec wise is going to be a Galaxy Note 2 that's uh, 8 inches you know all it's missing is uh, you know a dialer to make phone calls on which I'm sure some people will hack and we'll all be Walking around with eight-inch phones in about uh, six months. Thanks. Yeah, they did it with the Galaxy okay. Tab. So, yeah, give it a, give it a week. All right, sounds good, buddy. Thank, thanks for that news. And uh, we're gonna hand our unfortunately or uh, cautiously our show over to Randy. And Randy's gonna was did a feature last week, a three-part series on Samsung ri rise and also potentially their fall. So we're going to hand this over to Randy, let him uh, go a little bit in-depth about what he was talking about, and kind of first, can you, Randy, break down for us the first, second, and third part, kind of what you had talked about briefly, so the people at home can kind of understand where, what your series was about if they didn't read it? Um, well, first of all, to the, uh, I, I, want to, I want to send out a, a real heartfelt um uh, meaningful fuck you to the couple of nutless uh, wonders that bothered to track me down to uh, to send me emails to tell me how stupid I am and, and how great Samsung is. I appreciated those emails. I printed a couple of them out. Uh, the and actually, Samsung fanboys, did they? they yeah, yeah. When I get done here, I'm going to go take a big fat poop and I'm going to wipe my ass with your emails. But anyway, uh, <laughs> the, the whole thing started with a, a story that ran on SiteWorld uh, uh, about the Samsung Safe Program, which is their uh, Samsung uh, approved for, for enterprise use. Their, their safe devices uh, that to not only for companies to buy to directly give to employees, but for for corporations to allow their employees to bring to work to uh, to communicate on the on the company network. And it just it, the, the the angle of the story. They mentioned Apple in the story, but the angle of the story was more about how Samsung was going after Rim, and uh, it just it, it kind of took on a life of its own. There were a few other news items that came up, uh, you know, a, after that story popped. And it just, it kind of took on a life of its own. And I, you know, I got together with Chris and I said, you know, this is much bigger than, than safe, which is, was never really safe, uh, thanks to the, uh, the Exynos vulnerability that, uh, that they went through. But um, it, when, you, when you pile a lot of things together, beginning with the safe program, uh, moving on to how uh, Samsung has, is now, always has been about Samsung and not Android, and how they see Android more as a means to an end, uh, you know, that, than a benefit to their company. Um, and it, it just, it, it made, uh, it, it kind of made a light go off in my head uh, in terms of, you know, every company goes through, uh, you know, uh, every company that rises like this, it's, going, it's happening to Apple right now. Every company falls eventually. How far they fall, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's determined by uh, in each case, but so I mean, let, 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 let's kind of go over your articles here or, or your editorials here, Randy. And you had kind of touched about how um, you know this the safe program and about RIM or Apple, and it's about getting these phones into enterprise business levels. And it's the uh, only front. It's the only front where Samsung still has sizable market to gain from Apple. Um, you know they they you know they've cut deeply into the consumer market. They can't keep they can't keep growing at the at the same pace just on the consumer market. And this is the this is the next big the the last big frontier for them in terms of sales that they can steal from Apple. How and how are they doing in terms of getting their foot in the door? I mean, you know, obviously, we've always seen you know kind of Android struggling to get into at first, you know, into the enterprise business, and now we're starting to see them, you know, get in there, but it's just not something wide, widely known. So how how is Samsung doing with getting Android in the door? With it's, it, you know, there's no, there's no hard and fast evidence either way, but, uh, you know, I would have to say not very well. Uh, if I, I live in the, in the in northern Kentucky, but in the Cincinnati, you know, metropolitan area, and there's some very, very, very large companies around here. And I know I, I know a lot of people. You know, I'm a popular guy because I'm uh, I'm fun and I'm cute as a button. But uh, 
Yeah, All I right, know a lot man. of people. I know a lot of people that work in a lot of companies, and I've never seen. Term. Yeah, I've never <laughs> seen a single one with a Samsung device or any Android device that was given to them by their boss, given to them by their company. It's a. It's still a piece of shit BlackBerry. It, it's an iPhone, uh, you know, or or a flip phone. I mean, yeah, uh, I literally, am. those are the three things that I still see. I think some of it comes, you know, software side and security stuff, you know, and, and kudos at least a little bit to Samsung for trying to get into this market because, you know, it's going to sell a lot more devices. It's also going to convert, you know, rim lovers and Apple lovers over in there. So, you know, it, it, is, it is a good thing in, in my mind, but, you know, how, anything how Anything that helps them market their own product, you know, how could it be a bad thing? But, uh, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, Exynos vulnerability. The the safe certified products were never safe to begin with, but they certified them anyway. Yeah, and, and that's you know, never that's, happened to Rim, and that's never happened to Apple, and you know it's never happened with a flip phone. Um, and that's part of the problem why Android really hasn't made those in, inroads in the enterprise business community is because they really haven't shored up the software, you know, and end of the stuff for enterprise to feel comfortable enough. To you know, let President Obama be you know on his droid. Well, I just I don't and and where Android's at security wise, I think is more to do with the fact that you know Google is a primarily a consumer driven or a consumer focused company. Yeah, uh, that, that's, they have yeah. business products and business services, but you know Google doesn't give two quick squirts about about the enterprise in terms of Android. Uh, you know the 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 consumers where it's at for them, and it's where the you know it's where it's always been for them. They're, they're they're perfectly, Google's perfectly content with letting people own a BlackBerry device because they know at the end of the day when they leave work, they're going to shut off that fucking BlackBerry or turn it on mute and turn on their Android phone. At least that's my mentality. Well, you know, yes, uh, especially if that person's stuck with one of these, uh, these old-style draconian control uh, OS, BlackBerry OS 7 devices, the, the ones that are really a piece of shit. You know, but I got to tell you, this right here, this is a Nokia Lumia. See that right there? Mm -hmm. Don't put that see shit that? on the show. Oh, my God. I got to You fired. Right there. <laughs> I had to shut him off. Um, get your back, Randy. Um, no, I'm not, you piece of... It, that, yeah, that's going in the garbage because tomorrow... Rim is going to release their BlackBerry 10 devices uh, to the to the world. Tomorrow? So, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Holy it's shit! Tomorrow. I if I've been hiding under a rock, this will tell they you how delay. excited I am about. You, you mean, hang on a minute. You mean where has Rim been hiding under a rock? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, it's been so long in the making. Right? Exactly. I was okay, expecting another back. delay. Let's yeah. Let's get back to the topic here now, Randy. Now, in your second part of your series, it's not about Android for Samsung. What Never is has it been. about? What it is never it has. It's about Samsung. Okay, it's always sure. only and, and and I'm not not that that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, well, it's not a bad thing at all for Samsung. It's a bad thing for Google in that their their runaway uh, OEM market share leader you know has really truly no interest in Android whatsoever long term. Android's here today. It's what they're using today. It's good for them today. But if tomorrow they just think something like Tizen is better for them, they're gone. And they take their phone and their sales and just pour, pour it over the next They're going to take a substantial portion of that. Yeah, they're going to take, they, they won't take everyone. There are people that buy Samsung phones because right. they're the best Android devices. But there's another group of people, and I don't know how big either camp is, but they're buying the phone because it says Samsung on the back. And that's rightfully true. There's some people, you know, it's, it's more about the... Galaxy device than it is about Android. Just saying, same thing with people iPhone. It's not so much about the ISO iOS six. It's about you know that it's a freaking iPhone. And you know, and I think last year we had talked a lot about the ecosystem that Samsung is creating as well. They're almost creating their own Android experience, and a lot of companies are forking these phones. But, but they're doing it on a much grander scale in terms it's of not, options. But it's not an it's not an Android ecosystem, though. That's not the no, end game. No, it's not. It's a it Samsung ecosystem, totally 110%. Makes no on top of Android, right? Makes no sense to create an Android ecosystem to run within the Android ecosystem. All of these, it's not a, it, now we're back to is it an ecosystem or isn't it just because Samsung built it. 
but it, you know it's not tied to specifically to Android. Uh, when they when they begin to release ties and apps, there'll be a ties and section in their app store. Their music hub will have a ties and app. Their video hub, their reader hub, the gamer hub. It'll all be available on ties and and then you know once that happens, Samsung can begin to de-emphasize the Android portion uh, of of their which is you know ecosystem. it's a, it's you know they they basically you know as a smart company corporation out there they don't want to put all their eggs in one basket they want to make sure they got their eggs spread out because you know things change and trends change and you know and what's yeah. hot in the now maybe five ten years down the road wouldn't be I think Android's a little larger than that but I think what Samsung is kind of trying to do put their eggs in a few different baskets just in case no, no. In I don't case. I don't believe that for a second I'll tell you why. Samsung for for how many years has aped every single move that Apple's made from design to marketing to presentation to you know, how they introduce their devices? Why why suddenly when uh, the the control that Apple exerts the influence that they exert over their product comes from the fact that they made the hardware they made the software they made the the core apps that run on it why. Why, after Samsung followed them this far down the path, would they pull up and say, "No, nah, you know what? We don't. We don't need to control the OS. It's on our hardware. We're fine with Android." And then, you know, we'll put out some shit window devices, and then we'll put uh, we'll put a few cheap ass Tizen phones in in Asia, and then everything will be grand. I, I don't buy it for a second. So you you had said in your article as well too. For you, those at home that want to go a little deeper into this, you can go on our front page there and have all the articles there, so you can get a little more in depth into what Randy's talking about. But Samsung almost has to shift its isn't. Why? Yeah, I mean, it, the the to, to me, and I I did I guess uh, it, the point made perfect sense to me when I was writing it, but I guess it didn't come across the exactly the right way that I intended. <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah. Anyway, we do that daily, Randy. Don't worry. I think they, I, I think that they have to shift away from Android and onto something that they own and onto something that they control, because in if you're an Android OEM, it's but all don't about, they already own Android in a sense, no, Randy? No, they don't. They're really pretty well forking their devices at will, putting you know all their bells and whistles on it, being the leading manufacturer. They pretty well almost have. You know, Android by the balls in a sense that they can kind of control it to a certain degree as well. No, um, well, yes, but no. When you great answer. When you when you think about the larger picture, when you're an Android OEM, you're in the mud. You're slugging it out with HTC and LG. In in the ways that you differentiate your product are on how it looks and and how big the fucker is and how many cores are on the processor. It. it it benefits Samsung to separate themselves and their own products from this mess, from this this cesspool, this this rat race to the to the bottom or to the top, just depending on how you want to look at it. That that all of the other OEMs are engaged in. It it allows them, like Apple, to say, "Oh no, that's that's not us. We're over here on this pedestal and we're better because we have this OS." Um, I just so so. And I understand where you're going is where they almost want to do their own thing now, where it's, you know, potentially Samsung could be looking for their own operating system so they can control everything. The content, they turn into an Apple in a sense. Turn I out saw their that. own, basically an Apple fucking clone, which is, you know, which they've been criticized for a long time is, is trying to do. And you see, that's the road that they're going down already, right? It's, it, they're, they're well down that path, uh, Tizen devices will release this year. Tacoma is going to release uh, uh, probably a, a, a mid to to uh, to higher end device this year. Uh, so I mean, can they do it though? Because I mean, we're talking about you know they already kind of went Badu, which was maybe not not so ready. But do they go and buy Tizen or something like that, or 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 you know somehow you know catch on to some OS that they feel is going to be perfect for them and put money into a developer's marketing, you know, and start shooting those devices off. HTML5 apps and an Android compatibility layer, yeah, they can do whatever the hell they want. I haven't seen a whole lot about this uh, this Android compatibility layer that supposedly is capable in Tizen, but well, uh, it, apparently it does exist. You can, uh, BlackBerry did the same thing with the playbook. All you've got to do is, if you, um, It'd be pretty easy for them to do it. All they do, all you need to do is have the um, 
the Dalvik virtual machine running, and then you can run any app you want. So, and there's nothing stopping Samsung to, to implement that in a big way. I mean, BlackBerry did it with but the Playbook. It's open source, right? So that would give them a lift to, to get out of the gate. You yeah, because aside from apps. These, they could hide the fact in the Samsung App Store that you're installing an Android app on oh, your yeah. Tizen device. You're installing, you know, uh, Instagram or you're installing Facebook. What, what does the end user care whether it's a, a native Tizen HTML5 app or if it's a, an Android app? The, the, the end user doesn't need to know that. And I think that that is the, the type of people that uh, Samsung really want to be selling to because um, being at the top, being the king of the hill when it comes to sales and unit ship doesn't give you a lot of freedom. It just means you're the best at something. So, you know, if they if they went to Tizen and they had, um, aside from apps, they, they have pretty much everything they need. They need to get more content, but they have everything in place to... to where, where, do you, you, where do you see this all leading, Rand? Do you have some bold predictions kind of towards the end of your article on, on where where things are kind of heading, some of it, you know, your thoughts and ideas on it? Why don't you share those uh, with... Uh, the viewers. That those predictions are where the hate mail came from. <laughs> but oh no! Well, that's uh, you know what we can't get too much hate mail here, so go ahead and throw it out. Sam Samsung's market share is going to fall. Is it going to fall fifteen percent? I I don't know. It's a prediction. I I don't know. Yeah, I'll come back in January. Go up, it'll you know. go down, but that's guaranteed. But it's not going to be just a, a reduction in Android market share lost to other OEMs. Uh, you know, they can only make so many phones a year. Some of that share is going to go to Windows Phone 8. Some of that share is going to go to Tizen. Not um, me. No, no, not, <laughs> no, not me. But um, that that one prediction for a 15% reduction in their market share, uh, their Android market share, is where uh, apparently the, the 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 thing that lit the lit the flame. Um, what other type of you know, you had some other predictions on there as well, too. What do you see happening? Well, I think if you... Uh, oh, hang on one second. Um, I think if you look at the... I think if you look at the totality of what Samsung's doing, that the, the dominance that they show over Android, that's something that Verizon doesn't want any part of. I... I don't think AT&T would want any part of that over another operating system. The carriers don't want the, the OEMs, the phone manufacturers, to control the things. They want to control things. And I think, it, and it could happen with their Android devices, but it, it'll certainly happen with their Windows phone and their Tizen devices. The carriers are going to, they're going to sandbag releasing Samsung phones. If they want to see, uh, if they want to see more of a, a, an evening, a leveling of the playing field, they've got to, from a carrier perspective, they have to do something to kind of limit where Samsung is going on their networks. So I think you're going to see a slowdown in releases. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a company like Verizon, uh, the king of all dicks, uh, if they didn't just stop approving Samsung OS updates for any of their devices. Uh, they already do that for all devices. Yeah, but if you think the wait's long now, imagine buying a Samsung device and the OS that comes on the thing is the OS that you're going to have to live with for two years. Okay. I mean, Verizon could make things much worse for, for, for any any of the OEMs than, than they currently do. So, um, so kind of wrapping this up, Randy, what are, what are your overall... What are, what do you what do you think that the consumers at home should be lo looking for the next year or so out of out of Samsung? Be be looking for a Tizen OS. Uh, I almost in a story used a, a screenshot of a Samsung phone. I thought some bitch was running Android, but it was a Tizen screenshot. It's got TouchWiz. It looks exactly like TouchWiz on an Android device. The icons are exactly the same. You're you're not gonna know it that it. it the, the Samsung boxes have never said Android. Uh, Samsung sells you a Samsung device, and I think it's coming over the next 18 months, 24 months. You're going to go into your carrier. You're going to buy a, a Samsung device, and it's going to be running Tizen, and you'll never be the wiser. Oh, no. I'm unless sorry. unless you're unless you actually care, unless you give a shit, and you're thinking about these things, and you want an Android device. Other than that, the, the average smuck that walks in off the street that wants a Samsung phone is going to be running Tizen. Hmm. All right. Let, let's hear some feedback from our other panelists here. Doug, what do you got to say about what Randy had to say? I'm sure 
a couple of thoughts from us we ran past your mind after all of that. Yeah, no, I mean, there are definitely some interesting points there, and I, I don't think there's any question that Apple has shown that a really closed, carefully controlled ecosystem can be profitable. I mean, say what you want about Apple, and I, I often do, but they're profitable, at least for the moment, and it makes sense that Samsung would want to control their ecosystem more tightly, but the enemy to control of an ecosystem is education and and the the average consumer understanding what they're buying and understanding why it's important and you know and i don't obviously there aren't a lot of official statistics out there for things like this but it seems to me like the developer community around devices is becoming more and more of a selling point all the time it seems to me like more and more people all the time are flashing custom ROMs to their devices, or at the very least, they're just rooting their devices. And if that trend were to continue or were to accelerate, it might be that we might see a company like Samsung being forced to open up its ecosystem because that's what consumers want. Um, and maybe that's a pipe dream, but it would it would be nice. Uh, I don't think that I, I don't think that the numbers of people that are rooting and roaming and, and, and yeah, all it's, I, mean, I think that's a I think that's more more people. for hardcore Doug. I mean, for us guys here, that's something we'd love to do. But I think the average consumer, it's more about the apps and the phone. Yeah, I, mean, I saw a statistic that CM ten point one was being run on ten million devices in the U.S. That's a lot. It's not again. I'm not saying it's there now. There's how many? It, how many? How many Android activations per day? Well, a 1. lot. 1.3 million. <laughs> right. But now that's just in the U.S., and that number days. is global. Yeah. Okay. And I get what you're saying. Again, it's probably a pipe dream. But as people want more freedom with what they do with their device, and it's so ridiculously easy to flash custom ROMs onto your device, and it's only going to get easier. You Who know, knows? Maybe but, we'll Samsung, see. but Samsung, like Apple and like RIM and like even Google, realizes they're not going to sell a device to everyone. Right. Everyone isn't their customer. They've that's got true. this group of people that they can sell to, and that's who they're going to sell to. Very true. I'll throw my two cents in on here, guys, and I don't put anything past Samsung to test the muddy waters of, you know, kind of coming up with their possibly their own little, you know, and they've already done this. They've already, you know, they just can't, haven't really had the, the full-blown operating system to attach to of, of what they're going to do. But they had their Badu, you know, and they've had their app stores and their content shit and their music players and all that crap. And I think what they're looking for is an outlet to tie it all together to. And I don't think that they're not going to try. I mean, in a, in a business perspective, you know, they're going to try and compete. Is it going to work? That's the million-dollar, billion-dollar question. You know, because, you know, you, you, you throw a phone that's just as good as the Galaxy S4 up, but it's running on the Samsung ecosystem. Is it going to sell as well if they promote the hell out of it? Who knows? Um, they're definitely going to try. And I think any business is, you know, that I guess would probably not, not, not be in business if they didn't try something on their own. You know, and, and especially just how they're, you know, the Samsung ecosystem has grown so large as it is. They have all of those little, you know, subcultures and apps and features and stuff like that that they're going to go and they're going to try it. Is it going to work at the end of the day? I don't know. Um, is it going to fail in my eyes? Probably. I think it's more Android is kind of bigger. It's, it's, it's the culture. It's the idea. It's the operating system. It's the community around it. And I think... You know, it like like Apple and the iPhone, they have you know their culture and everyone's around it and it's promoted like that. Is there room for another uh, you know operating system with you know these Linux ones coming out, Tizen coming out, Ubuntu, you know, um, oh yeah, and that Windows stuff that's on like three percent of device you know market share. Um, you know, there it's going to become it's already going to coming to the point where saturation levels are going to be so heavy. And I think a lot of people are going with popularity now. Um, is there some room for some growth out there? There certainly is some room for some growth out there. To penetrate a brand new uh, ecosystem into a new market and completely make that profitable, I don't know. We're going to see. We'll see in this next year. 
You've there's got, already too many entrants already. There's going to be some thinning of the pack coming out. New guys are jumping in, but I think they're jumping into shark-infested waters, and there's going to be a lot of money lost. Maybe. Anyone else want to throw some throw them in on this? We pretty well hammered it. Alex, what are you going to um, say about that? I just wanted to say about the thing about Tizen and how it looks a lot like Android with touch with. I actually saw a question on Google Plus, I think, last week in the Galaxy S3 community. People were asking why they bought their Galaxy S3, if it was because it said Samsung or Android. A lot of people said because of Samsung. That's a scary That's a scary thing. That's a scary Samsung thing. has spent the last four or five years building up that, that first initial group of people that, that have to have their devices. It's not yep. like they're starting stone cold here. No, no, yeah. it's not. Not like they're Nvidia and uh, you know they're OEM and a new uh, a new line of shit that nobody's ever heard of before. They've got a core group of people that have to have something that says Samsung on it. That's a tremendous jump start. I'll I'll testify. I got family members who are saying, "Oh, I'm going to go move over to that Samsung device." Not necessarily move over to the Android. That wasn't the wording that they used. Mm -hmm. They said, I'm going to move over to that Samsung device, that new Samsung Note or They're, Galaxy S3. Nobody's a in a better brand. position to do this than Samsung. Nobody's in a better position. No, and you're, you'd true. be right now, Tom. Oh, sorry, Randy, finish up. I don't think any of the other OEMs have the have the, the Wavos to, to actually try it. No. Tom, some final thoughts on this? You want to throw any of your two cents in before we wrap this show up? Um, yeah, I think... Uh, I think uh, that Samsung are playing a very dangerous game here, you know, and I think they do have all the the pieces to up and shift to ties, and it's not going to be successful at first. Um, but they, there's nothing stopping them, especially if they uh, introduce a sort of Dalvik virtual machine sort of thing to run Android apps. But uh, what I'd really like to see Google is uh, the exact example I can use is you know the Chromebooks. They advertise the Chromebooks, and they have the nice advert where they're for everyone, and, at the, and then at the end it says the new laptop from Google. You know, it says it's from Google, but all these Android phones you see advertised on phone, they're either from HTC, they're from Motorola, or they're a Samsung phone. And you don't necessarily know they're Android until you either see a tiny There's green There's no on Android the box. shit on there at all, that's right. Yeah, exactly. So I think that Google ought to be advertising themselves and saying, buy one of our, buy an Android phone, and then show the entire ecosystem, because... Now, there's nothing stopping like die, die hard <laughs> HTC guys or die hard Samsung guys just saying, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to wait and see what the new Samsung comes out because it's got all my apps. But they don't know that it's got all the apps because it's Samsung or it's HTC. They, or, I mean, Android. They know that, the, that their next HTC phone is going to have all the apps they want, not Android. So, is it positive? so this, this could be a bigger problem, you know, obviously for Google. And maybe Google has already seen some of the writing on the wall potentially with purchase of Motorola and X phones and Nexuses and, and, and so many devices out there. Not that they're doing a great job on it. That's a whole another ball game, another show. But Indeed. just hypothetically, maybe Google's already seen this issue. Maybe they have. What they're doing about it, we'll talk about that another day. But I think Randy's giving you a lot of food for thought and some stuff to nibble on for the future. And uh, I'd like to thank Randy for doing that in-depth uh, report on that and sharing his thoughts for you. And I'm sure those guys who emailed you, you know what, as much as they hated you, Randy, you made them think twice and you brought some passion out about smartphones. And uh, whether they agree with you or disagree with you, you def definitely got them thinking. Right, it, those those and those fuckers put some effort into finding me too because they contacted me through my Google Plus page. So those they they tried. They good, really good, had something that they wanted job. to say. Good Come job, on, Randy. Thank, thanks a lot, Alex, for being on the show. Doug, Randy, and Tom. And that was uh, episode twenty-four of the Android Headline Show. We'll be back next week on a regular scheduled time of Mondays to piss off some more companies and talk about some good old Android devices coming out and cover all the news and rumors in the Android world. So in the meantime and in between time, that's it for the Android Headline Show. Take care, be safe, and don't download any uh, malicious apps. Take care, everyone.